A few years ago, I wrote an article titled The Seven Challenges of West Coast Swing, and a high-level West Coast Swing pro commented and said, Brian, don't tell people West Coast Swing is hard, but in our experience, it is a tricky dance, and if you're struggling with any seven of these, we want you to know you're not alone, and we're here to help. My name is Brian B. I'm Miss Megan. And this is The Seven Challenges of West Coast Swing. So the first challenge is that triple steps are hard. Why are triple yes, steps hard, Miss Megan? Because you're taking three steps, and cramming them in two beats of music. So let's discuss that, but first I want to read something that I got. Another high-level pro, this person will remain nameless, very, very good dancer, says, okay, honestly, does anyone do quick, quick, slow on triples? So a triple step is three steps in two beats of music. So if we're doing a triple step with our left foot and we're counting it one and two, one and two. If we did it again, one and two. Now for a beginner, that's hard. Now the trick in West Coast Swing is you're toggling back between walks and triples. So if I'm doing a basic, if we just do a basic facing each other, we're doing walk, 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 then two triple steps, triple step, triple step. And in a two hour conversation with my friend online, we discussed how infrequently we practice these triples and this guy does it all the time and he happens to be really, really good. So what I want you to do is just practice your triple steps a triple step, triple step, but I want you to count it in quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. And I'm even going to give you a quick little drill that I like to do. Megan has probably seen this before. We're going to do tap steps. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you're going to do triple steps. One and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. Back to tap steps. So it gets you used to six, seven, eight. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. So focus on that. Do that drill back and forth. Practice your triple steps because triple steps are hard. Number two challenge is West Coast Swing is not a mirrored dance. What is a mirrored dance, Megan? A mirrored dance is where <clears throat> you are doing the same steps as your partner, just opposite. Right, so it's very easy to understand for a beginner. If I did a box step in waltz or rumba, I'm going forward, she's going back. We both go to the side. I go back, she goes forward. It's very mirrored. We're going to do a crossover break. We're both going the same direction at the same time. West Coast Swing is not mirrored, meaning maybe in a sugar push, it seems mirrored, right? I go back, she goes forward and vice versa, but then quickly it starts to change. I'm getting out of the slot to my right, but we call it a left side pass. I'm getting out to my left, but we call it a right <laughs> side pass. And then we have a whip where I'm going ring around the rosy and she's going up and down the slot. So it's not, not a mirror. Mirrored. It's not mirrored, it's tricky. So for that, you just need to master your basics, leaders and followers, footwork and understand the rules. Number three is dancing in open frame is hard. So what's open frame versus closed frame? This is closed frame. This is easier. Why? Well, because I have a hand right on Miss Megan that I can help her move with. I'm physically connected to her. West Coast is done predominantly in an open frame and also not even with two hands, with one. So now we have just this one arm to rely upon. I have to have all my connection correct, my fingers in the right position with tension. She has to have her fingers with tension, her elbows dropped low, my center moving away. All of that has to be done for me just to lead my partner, right? And it's real easy. In beginner class, if this happens to you, watch a beginner class. They do sugar pushes and for some reason, the arms defy gravity. And then they don't go away from <clears> And they other. don't go away. So what we like to do to practice that is put a purse, or in where I came from, we call it a pocketbook. I don't know why. Pocketbooks don't have hands. I understand, but in Massachusetts, a purse <laughs> is a pocketbook where I grew up. So if you had a pocketbook or a purse or a small bag hanging from your elbow, that would help keep this away connection. But the other part of open frame is that I have to toggle back and forth between forward and back connections. So just an easy way to practice that is take two hands, pull your center or your your center, core. your core, the middle of you away from Not your partner. Your bum. Not your bum. The Not whole thing. Not your shoulders. The whole yep. torso. And then just see if you can toggle back and forth and quickly change those. If you can quickly change those without there being a big delay <laughs> in it, right? Then you're mastering a dancing open frame. Number four is what we're doing with that open frame that starts to make West Coast Swing amazing. And that's why we're taking the time in this video to explain this because it is an amazing dance. When West Coast Swing is done at its, at its highest level. We have this elasticity in everything. There's this elastic look of our centers moving away, and that's tricky. So what do we mean by that? 
basically, as I'm anchor stepping in beginner class, it looks like this, anchor step. And we're stoked because you just did a triple step, which we know is hard. But then you're like, but why don't I look like the kids on YouTube, Brian B? And that's because anchors are hard. So what I want you to do is practice tucking this foot behind and rolling your feet. Roll, roll, roll. And as you roll that weight back, our weight will move away from each other. This is a hard concept. So you can practice this on your own. If we just did a sugar push, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. For the leader, it's easy because I'm rolling my weight back as I walk into the next step. So we have a belief that your weight transferring through your feet, as simple as this, as we walk back, we're transferring our weight through our feet. Like my coach once said, Brian, you dance like you have blocks on the bottom of your feet. I want you to think about rolling toe to heel or heel to toe. And if we do this together, three and four, we roll through our feet, we start to create some elasticity in our West Coast swing. So if you're struggling with that, that will help. You're not alone, everyone does that. Number five is West Coast is off phrase. So if you ever, especially if you're a music person, if you dance cha-cha, this makes sense to you. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, and. Starts again, one, two. But here's what happens with West Coast Swing. The music goes one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Wait a minute, the music is going seven, eight, but I'm walking, but the pattern is one, two. So we have six count patterns over eight beats of music and it doesn't match. Now, when we get to the next part, we'll explain why that's a cool thing, but the way to combat that is, here's a couple different phases. In the beginning, we're counting our patterns. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. I think then, then eventually that starts to go away, but if that tricks you up, here's a good way to think about it. Count in two beat increments. One, two, one, and two, one, two, one, and two. So if I do the same patterns, left side pass, I go one, two, one, and two, one, and two. One, two, one, and two, one, two, one, and two. Because that will work all the way through your higher level patterns. One, two, one, and two. One, two, one, and two. One, and two, one, and two. So if that tricks you up, West Coast Swing being off phrase, think about it in two beat increments. That's gonna be super helpful. Number six is we have a wide range of music. If you dance waltz, it's slow. It's generally slow. It's if it's not always slow. If it's really slow, it's like 82 beats a minute. If it's fast slow, it's like 90 beats a minute. It's still slow for all intents and purposes. West Coast Swing, you might get a song that's like 65 beats a minute. You might get one that's 130. So you might get one that's very poppy and you hear a beat. And these days, we have all these melodic songs where you go, where's the beat? I know to the swing dance traditionalists, that's sort of sacrilegious, but swing dance is evolving. It already evolved from Lindy Hop. It's already different. It continues to evolve. So to get comfortable with music, the best West Coast Swing dancers I know listen to a lot of music. They count a lot of music in their head. They listen to stuff they like. They listen to stuff they don't like. So especially if you're ever thinking about competing in West Coast Swing, you're gonna get a wide range of music. So listen to a lot of music, count along to the music, and that will help. Number seven, seven, is that West Coast Swing is a conversation. Meaning, once it's comfortable, in the beginning we think of this as lead, follow. I lead, she follows, right? or today it could be he follows, Whatever. but yes. there's a leader and a follower. I lead, someone else follows. But at its highest level, Megan just did it there, she did a little hook behind anchor, and now it's a little bit of a conversation, right? So one, two, three, and four, five, and six. I can start to feel where my partner's going, and I'm not purely leading everything. I'm giving my partner something, so as you're comfortable through these first six steps, I want you to feel comfortable in your own dancing. Know the rules of the game, right? I'm still leading a six count pattern, right? Boom, Megan's following a six count pattern, but maybe she does something different on her anchor that if I'm tuned into, I can follow if I'm well connected. So back in the day, they used to hijack, right? Meaning they just, the followers would take control and they would do something goofy and separate. I think today what's happening is, is through the connections, 
I'm allowing Megan to go somewhere and she's coming back. Now we followed the rules of the game. We came back into our slot, but she took some liberties within that. And at the highest level, especially as the follower, I think it's important. I'm just gonna walk you over here, Ms. Megan. I think it's important for you guys to know that you can take some chances and explore a little bit within your dancing. Maybe 20% of the time, try some different stuff out so it's not purely leader and follower. All right, if you want an easy way to work through all of these, the best thing that we've ever created to help people is a full access membership over on our website. We also have an app for, the, uh, for Apple and Android. There's 17 different dance styles. Everything's broken down. If you have a problem, you just type in uh, triple steps and it will pull up all the videos discussing triple steps. If you have a specific question, you can type it in there. There's even like a Facebook feed in there where you can say, hey, Brian B and Megan, I'm having trouble at the two minute point of this video, do you have any advice? And we can link other videos right in there to help you, it is super cool. There is an app on your iPhone and Android, super helpful. You can try it 14 days free here. We love you guys, see you on the dance floor soon.